Have you ever wondered what's happening inside your computer when you load a program or video game? Well, millions of operations are happening, but perhaps the most common is simply just copying data from a solid state drive or SSD into dynamic random access memory or DRAM. An SSD stores all the programs and data for long-term storage, but when your computer wants to use that data, it has to first move the appropriate files into DRAM, which takes time, hence the loading bar. Because your CPU works only with data after it's been moved to DRAM, it's also called working memory or main memory. The reason why your desktop uses both SSDs and DRAM is because solid-state drives permanently store data in massive 3D arrays composed of a trillion or so memory cells, yielding terabytes of storage, whereas DRAM temporarily stores data in 2D arrays composed of billions of tiny capacitor memory cells, yielding gigabytes of working memory. Accessing any section of cells in the massive SSD array and reading or writing data takes about 50 microseconds, whereas reading or writing from any DRAM capacitor memory cell takes about 17 nanoseconds, which is 3,000 times faster. For comparison, a supersonic jet going at Mach 3 is around 3,000 times faster than a moving tortoise. However, speed is just one factor. DRAM is limited to a 2D array and temporarily stores one bit per memory cell. For example, this stick of DRAM with eight chips holds 16 gigabytes of data, whereas a solid state drive of a smaller size can hold two terabytes of data, more than 100 times that of DRAM. Additionally, DRAM requires power to continuously store and refresh the data held in its capacitors. Therefore, computers use both SSDs and DRAM. And by spending a few seconds of loading time to copy data from the SSD to the DRAM, and then prefetching, which is the process of moving data before it's needed, your computer can store terabytes of data on the SSD and then access the data from programs that were preemptively copied into the DRAM in a few nanoseconds. For example, many video games have a loading time to start up the game itself, and then a separate loading time to load a save file. During the process of loading a save file, all the 3D models, textures, and the environment of your game state are moved from the SSD into DRAM, so any of it can be accessed in a few nanoseconds, which is why video games have DRAM capacity requirements. Just imagine, without DRAM, playing a game would be 3,000 times slower. On the motherboard, there are four DRAM slots, and when plugged in, the DRAM is directly connected to the CPU via two memory channels that run through the motherboard. Next, let's open and look inside one of these DRAM microchips. Inside the exterior packaging, we find an interconnection matrix that connects the ball grid array at the bottom with the die which is the main part of this microchip. This 2 gigabyte DRAM die is organized into eight bank groups, composed of four banks each, totaling 32 banks. Within each bank is a massive array, 65,536 memory cells tall by 8,192 cells across. Let's get back to the details of how DRAM works and zoom in to explore a single memory cell situated in a massive array. This memory cell is called a 1T1C cell and is a few dozen nanometers in size. It has two parts, a capacitor to store one bit of data in the form of electrical charges or electrons and a transistor to access and read or write data. If this capacitor is charged up with electrons to one volt, it's a binary one. And if no charges are present, and it's at zero volts, it's a binary zero. And thus, this cell only holds one bit of data. As mentioned earlier, this 1T1C memory cell is one of 17 billion inside this single die, and is organized into massive arrays called banks. Within a single bank, there are 65,536 rows and 8,192 columns, and the 31-bit address is used to activate a group of just eight memory cells. We now have the means of accessing any memory cell in this massive array. As mentioned earlier, the transistors used to isolate the capacitors are incredibly small, and thus charges leak across the channel. The refresh operation is rather simple, and is a sequence of closing all the rows, pre-charging the bit lines to 0.5 volts, and opening a row. To refresh, just as before, the capacitors perturb the bit lines, and then the sense amplifiers drive the bit lines and capacitors to the open row fully up to one volt or down to zero volts, depending on the stored value of the capacitor, thereby refilling the leaked charge. This process of row closing, pre-charging, opening, and sense amplifying happens row after row, taking 50 nanoseconds for each row, until all 65,000-ish rows are refreshed, taking a total of three milliseconds or so to complete. 
The refresh operation occurs once every 64 milliseconds for each bank, because that's statistically below the worst case time it takes for a memory cell to leak too much charge to make a stored one turn into a zero, thus resulting in a loss of data.